we always need to remember to take care of our bodies as we get older, and that includes our bones. That's right. Dr. Jamie Johnston with GBMC Health Partners is here to talk about osteoporosis and how we can lower our risk. Thank you so much for being Thank with you. us, Doctor. Yeah, thanks for having nice me. Nice to appreciate. see you again. Nice to see you. So for those who don't know, what exactly is osteoporosis? So osteoporosis is a disease or a disorder of the bone where it becomes weak and brittle over time. Uh, women as they age are particularly at risk uh, as they lose estrogen, particularly after menopause. Uh, but it puts you at higher risk for fractures. And um, our goal as orthopedic surgeons and endocrinologists in, uh, in dealing with osteoporosis is to manage it mm -hmm. and prevent fractures down the road. Sure. So you mentioned being a woman could be a potential contributing factor. Yeah. Is there anything else that could lead to osteoporosis? Well, I, the people who are at higher risk are uh, postmenopausal women, mm -hmm. um, people who are heavy drinkers, mm -hmm. smokers, or heavy people who don't get enough exercise, uh, weight bearing exercise. Uh, or and then when you combine osteoporosis with things like uh, vision changes and trouble walking, you can have a higher risk of falls. So people who are at higher risk of falls are also higher risk of fractures. Gotcha. Is there anything that we can do to prevent the disease? Well, I, I think there's, there's a couple things. Number one, uh, when you're um, younger women, uh, particularly, you want to make sure you reach your peak bone mass. So you want to exercise when you're younger, get enough calcium and vitamin D in your diet. Um, and uh, so if you, if you get to a higher peak bone mass when you're younger, then you have more to work with when you start to lose some of that uh, um, bone structure later on in life. Sure. Um, again, avoiding heavy drinking and smoking. Uh, some people who are on steroids may be at high risk, and so if you can avoid steroids. But uh, in general, um, those are the big things. And then weight-bearing exercises. Sure, so. so like running, jogging, things like that. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. very okay, important. Perfect. So if we do already have symptoms of osteoporosis or a full-on diagnosis, what sort of treatment options are available? Are there treatment options? Yeah, so people with osteoporosis, um, they, there are lots of medications that are available. So it used to be uh, that a lot of women would take estrogen or progesterone, when they, but they stopped it because there was a higher risk of breast cancer. And so a lot of people mm -hmm. don't take that estrogen therapy when they're older anymore. But yeah. the, there's these cells in your body called osteoblasts that actually make the bone. And what we found is if you lose that estrogen, you're, they don't work as effectively. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly having bone pulled out over time and you're not replacing it the way a younger person would. So there are some medicines that are available uh, for people with severe osteoporosis with a DEXA uh, you know, bone density score that's low and that are very effective in preventing fractures. In fact, they can reduce your fracture risk by about 50%. Oh, wow, that's um, significant. Very that's important, huge. yeah. So when is surgery an option? Well, we, well we, our goal, honestly, is to avoid surgery. So okay. what we want to do is we want to uh, take people who have osteoporosis and are high risk for fractures mm -hmm. and prevent them from having fractures so they don't need to see people like me to have <laughs> a fracture fixed. <laughs> we want uh, to pick up on the early fractures. So for instance, if you have a fracture of your wrist when you're 50 or 51, a lot of people think, oh, this is just a small thing. I don't need yeah. to do anything about it. But if you have a fracture you should get tested for osteoporosis to make sure that you're not going to have a hip fracture or a mm -hmm. spine fracture, a pelvis fracture when you're 70 or 80, which can be totally disabling. Right. Uh, the numbers are really startling. So there's 300,000 people in the United States who have hip fractures a year. 25% oh. of those people die within a year. Oh my goodness. Another 25% oh. of people are in assisted living. And 50% of those people will need a gait aid for the rest of their life. So a hip fracture is really a disabling injury. And if you, if you take that opportunity when you have the wrist fracture to get checked out by your primary care doctor, to get a DEXA scan, mm -hmm. to make sure your, your calcium and vitamin D is fine and you're getting the weight-bearing exercises, you might be able to prevent that hip fracture, and that, that's a big win for everyone. Wow. I have so many more questions. I, I wish we had more time. But where can we go if we're interested in learning more? Um, so uh, next week, we're actually, so uh, this week coming up is Nash World Osteoporosis Week. And next week at GBMC, we have a uh, lecture series called Time for Me, where we're oh, talking right. about it's osteoporosis. It's actually tomorrow night. Yep. It's going to be happening tomorrow evening at 630. Info's on your screen right now. Yep. And uh, you can go to gbmc.org, um, Time for Me. Yeah. Um, and other op uh, good websites are the National Osteoporosis Foundation.
Perfect. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. Great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Good information. Absolutely. Especially as women. Absolutely. Yeah.